You're watching Your View. Thank you for joining us. This is Scott Kaplan and Crew tonight. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and Crew show on the mightier 1090 AM. SoCal Sports Talk. Here's Scott Kaplan, Alex Padilla, and John Browner. Hey, great friends. Happy to have everybody along on a Monday. For those of you that are listening out there on 1090 on the terrestrial radio airwaves, happy to have everybody along throughout Southern California. For those of you that are watching on YouTube and you're involved in our YouTube chat, that's home base for Kaplan and crew. And for those of you that are watching tonight on your view, Channel 4 San Diego and Santa Barbara, 118 in Orange County and Palos Verdes, happy to have you guys tonight as well. So welcome to the Seven Mile Casinos and welcome to Kaplan and crew where today we're going to have for you coming up all the biggest stories that people are talking about from the weekend as we get ready for the new week. Let me say hola to hermano numero uno, Grande Alejandro, coming off an exciting weekend. I saw you down at Petco Park this weekend. Mm -hmm. I was there on Friday night. I uh, grabbed a seat over. It's called Gallagher Square now with the old park at the park. Uh, and had a great had a great time. They sponsored park at the park now. It's called Gallagher Square or Gallagher, Gallagher Park or something. Gallagher who? Not the watermelon yeah. guy, I don't think. No, uh, not, not the watermelon guy. comedian guy? No? I think so. And uh, say what's up to my man, Big Brown, John Browner, bringing the street cred from the podcast shed. What's up? Shout out, boys. The drone game is back, man. Browner's drone shots are back live. Shout out to the DJ Too Mini. Really? You got your drone fixed? Yes, Congratulations. Sir, yes, sir. Fixed or new one? Nice work. I got a brand new one, bro. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Okay. Yesterday in Point Loma, about 1,000 feet in the air. Airplanes almost hit me. Over under, when does Browner break this one? Oh, 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 oh! It, this will not break. This is this is great. It fly, takes off on its own. My problem was takeoff. It takes off <laughs> and it lands itself. So now that I got that out the way, like even if it's near something, it won't land because it's danger. So let's use the drone and some drone shots in the new TV show. Let's done. do that. Done. Okay. I I want to see what you got. I want to see your drone game. Where you want to see me shoot at? I don't know where Go I want to see you shoot at. Let's see what Qualcomm looks like right now. Yeah, that's a great idea. You know, it'd be great if you could put video tomorrow on the TV show for everybody around Southern California to see what is left of Qualcomm Stadium, which is like nothing, and then what is sprouting from the ground with San Diego State's new football stadium. Can a brother handle that? Done. I Challenge okay. Accepted. Listen. There you go. Hey, um, let me talk about all the biggest stories from this past weekend. Because between baseball and college basketball, there's so much that happened. So let me get to all of that. Our top stories today being presented by Corky's Pest Control, 1-800-901-1102. If you are in L.A., Riverside, and San Diego, we'll come to you, man. We'll get there. And if you got issues like rats or mice or gophers, I didn't know gophers were such an issue, but I guess they are. They're a big problem for people who live out in the country. Uh, court comes and takes care of it. If you've got termite problems, it may mean a, a full fumigation. It could be your house or your business. It could be like a, an office building, but it could also be just spot treatment. Just go in and take care of it right here. Super inexpensive and quick and easy. So listen, if you've got pest control issues, Corky got solutions. Call 1-800-901-1102. Corky is. Thank you, fellas. All right. Start off with the Padres. Keep it hyper local. Keep it hometown. Keep it home based. Here goes. The Padres won three out of four this opening weekend. And it was impressive the way it began. Certainly, I thought for Eric Hosmer, who came in real hot with a couple of home runs in the first couple of games. But for me, I'll say this. What I was most ex most excited about, and I think what what Padre fans should be most excited about is the first three guys in the pitching rotation. I mean, you got what you expected between you Darvish, Blake Snell, and Joe Musgrove. You got what you expected. You got real professional frontline starting pitching. And in the case of Musgrove, it's a great story that he's from El Cajon. He grew up a Padre fan. He comes home. He plays for the hometown team. It's a great story. The part of it that's not so great is Chris Paddock, the fourth oh, starter. Yeah. And it's not like Chris Paddock is like just God awful throwing up just like batting practice. It's just, here's what happened to Chris Paddock. And here's, here's what the problem for Paddock. He got all the hype 
And he got all the nickname, the sheriff, and this whole story about who he is. And, and the way Kevin Acey of the Union Tribune wrote about him, it was like he was Rob Gronkowski and his brother were the Gron his brothers were the Gronks. Like, like they're all just so cool and so fun. And they show up their cowboy hat and their tie, and they're all business. Listen, all hype, all fluff when they had nothing. That's what he did. And it's a disservice to the dude because he ain't that good. What'd you guys think of Paddock yesterday? Look, man, I'm gonna keep it real short, real simple. Y'all know how much I love Chris Paddock. I was into it. I thought he would. Re I thought he would rebound, but I gotta say this: time to put the sheriff on desk duty, because that ain't good. We we don't need that no more. Put Weathers in there. Put Gore in there. That slot should be a rotating position for these young guys to go out, start a game, get some innings, and whoever gets hot, they stick there. Period. End of story. Because that we can't have that. Not no more. No, no, no. This is a championship or, or bust situation. We can't have him busting every four days. You got, listen, I understand that compared to the other guys, maybe he wasn't as as exciting or as great because you already had a history with Paddock here in San Diego. But if you look at the stats, it wasn't all that Stop bad. It. And it was Stop game it. one. It was game it. one. Everybody Bruh. needs to pump right. the brakes. Right. You got right. Lamette is hurt. Weathers has never started in the league. He's played, but he's never started. He played He played great yes, uh, Saturday. Absolutely pitched fantastic. Gore, yeah, we'd love to see him. And then Morahone tonight, we're going to see what he's got. But... Just one game, four innings pitched. You didn't get out the fourth either. Blake didn't get out the fourth either. Everybody let me pumped the brakes a little me, bit. Let me ask y'all a question, both of y'all. Okay, since Scott chimed in with agreeing with you, how long y'all going to put up with this? Because we know, we, we've seen this track record. Nothing from Dude. this track record tells us that the sheriff going to show up at sundown and win a 10 paces in turn. And, and the same could be said for Clayton Kershaw of the Dodgers. We know when, when he gives up 10 hits in his first uh, first game, you say, well, his track record is that he's going to have another great year, even though he had a rough start to the season. All I'm saying is this. I think Alex is right. Paddock has history, and people have lost faith in him. And now he's no longer a one, which he never should have been. He's a four at right. best. And so it's one game. Give him a shot to your, to your question of how long do you give him? I'm not saying it's like a starting quarterback where he's on a short leash. I'd give it a few weeks and see what happens. I would say he's on a short leash because he's he's had the track record already. He's this is not his first year. I think he's on a short leash. I think he's going to get, depending on what Lamette does when he comes back. I would say, if he if he does not perform within five starts, you could see him in the bullpen. No, five starts is a month and a half. One two. That's a month and a half. Five starts. What? No, no. It's, no. it's every four days. Every so four, I mean, it's five um, days. It's about 25 days, dude. So listen to us do math. I ain't giving Let's him listen that to long. Brown or do math. <laughs> I ain't giving him that long, bro. I ain't doing it. I'm sorry. Well, I can't I can't drop four games like that when I got other guys who could be doing better or guys who have a need give you, them a chance to prove themselves. Who you think could do better, but we don't know. Yet. Go, well, but, but, I, but but I listen, I'm not I'm not suggesting that Brown or that is way off. I mean, you got other guys, you're deeper than you've ever been. You give them a shot. If he's not, if he can't elevate to what his he, he was expected to be just two seasons ago, then find another role for him. Put Don't. other guys in. And here's uh, the thing, too. Here's the thing, too. It's a long season. He'll have plenty of chances to find his rhythm and get back out there in a starting role. That's the beauty of baseball. There's such a long season. There's going to be so many ups and downs. You don't want to start a guy like this getting losing games like this. I, so we I got to so bench that's the Alex's point. Do we got to bench Tatis then because Track five, record. Right. five errors in four games? Track record. No, thanks, yeah, let, bro. Let's let's take a look at this. Put up some of the highlights from this past weekend. I want to bounce around because there's a lot I want to get to here. Uh, Padres win three out of four. They win their first three. First time since 1984 that they got off to a 3-0 and start. But along the way, highlights and lowlights. Tatis, I know that Jace Tingler talked about it yesterday. Pressing, young guy, big contract. Lots of commercials all of a sudden. He's a guy who at 20 or 21 years old is like, wait a second. So it's not just me being a kid making a couple bucks playing ball. No, now you're a superstar. Now you're a brand. So Tatis did not have a very good week uh, weekend to start the season. Did hit a home run yesterday in garbage time. Cosmer came in hot. He crushed it, destroyed it. I mean, it wasn't an Otani destruction, but it was okay. It was, it was damn uh, close. I know. I'm, and Musgrove um, had a really nice performance in his debut. So there's the Padres side of things. I mentioned the angels for a second. Let me just say one quick thing before I get there. 
Dodgers also started three and one. I'm on scoreboard watching already. Not, not at 130 games in. I'm at scoreboard watching four games in. Dodgers, Padres, head-to-head -head all season long. That's what I'm watching. You, you want to know how ridiculous I'm going to be all season? I, I've told you guys this last year during the playoffs. I have nothing but Dodger friends back home in Oxnard. And when they lost opening day and the Padres won, I was like, not being undefeated, not my team. That's how ridiculous this year is going to be after one game. Already talking trash. Are, and they're listen, as much as Dodger fans want to pretend that they're not worried, they are. They are. You can't have Padres, Padres tonight. Padres tonight. So um, when we're on television tonight, Padres, Dodgers, games will be underway. UCLA National Championship, uh, Gonzaga and Baylor, and I want to get to the UCLA part of the story, uh, will be underway. Um, Alex, put up that slide, though, tonight um, about the Padres and the Giants and the NL West standings. Yeah, we're watching from the very beginning. I'm going to make this three every day. Padres, three and one. Yes, absolutely. Look at the standings absolutely. every damn day. Remember a couple of years yep. ago when Scott wanted to see Clippers versus Lakers every day? Same thing. All year. Yep. Every day. Every day. All right. Now, I'm going to say this about baseball, that the Angels are that team that's sort of caught in between now. Like, they tried to become the LA Angels, and it really never turned into anything, and they've spent a ton of money over the years, and the superstars haven't turned into wins, and they've got what many people think is the best player in baseball, blah, blah, blah. But it takes a performance like the one that was put in this past weekend by Otani to make people actually pay attention to what's going on in Anaheim. Alex, can you put this up on the screen? What Otani did in one inning as a pitcher first and then as a hitter. Take us through it. And this all happened in the first inning yesterday, by the way. Yeah. Otani was making his uh, pitching debut since he had Tommy John. He threw the fastest pitch on record so far in the 2021 season at 100.6 miles per hour. And then in the bottom of the first, had the hardest hit home run of the season so far with an exit velocity of 115.2 miles per hour. All right. Can we see the highlights of this? Because I'll tell you right now, Otani, like to me, I was super interested when all these Major League Baseball teams were trying to position to get him. Wow. Guy who can pitch, guy who can play defense in the outfield, and a guy who can hit for power. Wow. We don't really... We don't really have guys like that, you know, because we never cultivate that. The guys in America become specialists, obviously. And pff, there's nobody who does exactly what this guy does or is supposed to do. But then he got hurt so early. So it's like, oh, this is never going to work. Go ahead and roll the video here, Alex. Let's take a look at what happened. Here's the pitch. Love hearing Matt Vaskersian's voice. <laughs> first pitch swinging. Oh, and first pitch crushing. How's Matt okay. Baskersian doing this? Is Matt Baskersian actually in Anaheim for these games, or is he at like a studio in New York calling these games? It's a good question, but I would assume that he's probably in Anaheim. A lot of guys do this. A lot of guys do have a team, and then when they get called up to the national broadcast, they just go do the national broadcast. Yeah, but I also wondered about the guy from uh, the Knicks Baskersian. from the NBA, Mike Breen. He does it yeah, he, all yeah. the time. Well, so does Ian Eagle. I mean, Ian does Eagle. the same. I mean, a lot of guys do that. But I'm just—I didn't know because Vaskersian had relocated to New York, as I recall. Maybe he's relocated back out to LA. Don't I know. know. Be fun to have him on. Be good. To I have mean, him on. how many times can you relocate before you just move? You you're just moving around. Well, I mean, he's been in New York a long time now. Can I say you something know. too about Otani's performance, bro? He just threw a fast pitch. I don't really see what the pro. I don't see why people are so freaked out. Why that's so awesome. He threw one on one. Chapman does that all the time. But Chapman then doesn't Actually, go and hit a home run the next inning. Right. The home runs down. Yeah. The home run is that's very the impressive. The whole point of the of the of the story, hater, is that no one is pitching 101 miles per hour in the next inning hitting bombs. Listen, right. I, I just I'm not impressed by this guy. I'm just not. Well, is how, it, are you, how could you not be impressed that he he had Tommy John surgery, and has come back? And is already throwing over 100 miles an hour. I mean, that's that's pretty damn impressive. If you if you no? talk to, if you talk to other baseball guys like me, we know you always come back stronger after Tommy John. Everybody knows that. Oh, like really? Clevenger, yeah, is going on doing it again. See, because he won't throw harder. Go get that thing cut up. You come back throwing harder. So I'm not impressed know, by. I'm not impressed. To me, by I'm this. very impressed. <laughs> Win something, bro. Win some. Win. Give bring bring back a Cy Young and a batting title before I'm even in, interested in this guy. What are the Angels doing anyway? 
what are they? Are they Southern California? Are they Southern LA? Are they Northern San Diego? I don't care. I don't care. Mm. Mike Trout, Albert Damn. Pujols. Albert Pujols is like 37. He might be actually might be older than Tom Brady. His birth certificate's a whole lying piece of paper. I'm not interested in the Angels at all. Well, Damn. I am. Damn. I am. I'm, I am interested in the Angels, and I think one of the things that interests me in the Angels is that nobody else is interested in the Angels, and the fact that Otani, I, I'm, now I'm more curious, can he stay healthy as a pitcher? Can he hit bombs like that as a hitter? How often will he play? Like, they want to put that bat in the lineup, so is he just going to DH or might he play out in the outfield? I got to say right now, I am interested in the Angels. So, listen, let's keep rolling because we got a lot more to get to. Uh, coming up, I want to talk about UCLA's performance and what's going to happen during the national championship of college basketball. And for those of you that happen to be watching on TV right now, the game is already going on. So you're probably not even watching us. You're probably watching the game. DVR uh, it. For those of you. Yeah. For those of you that are listening on radio right now. Yeah. Tonight DVR the TV show while you're watching the game. Let me say one quick thing. Um, much love to my man, Gary Cooper, Mountain Trust Mortgage and Realty Services, 858-376-1299. So I have a friend of mine who has a beautiful house, not listed for sale, not listed at all. But realtors are calling saying, would you be curious about what we might be able to find for you? I'm telling you right now, this friend of mine over the weekend, without trying at all, no for sale sign, has five offers on his house. Five. Because two realtors brought in people and they, they, they said, hey, we've got all these offers now. The house isn't even for sale. If you put the house for sale, the price will just go up. This is what's going on in the real estate market right now. It's craziness. Call Gary Cooper. He's an expert. He can help you. Buying, selling, refinancing, positioning to buy. Call Gary. He can help. 858-376-1299. 858-376-1299. All right, fellas. Saturday night, the NCAA basketball tournament, UCLA and Gonzaga. Um, I didn't know anybody that thought UCLA was going to win. And very frankly, I didn't know anybody who thought UCLA could keep it close. UCLA had an incredible run through this NCAA tournament. But when they tied the game, it, it was just one magical NCAA tournament moment. Not for an upset, but for a crazy buzzer beater by a freshman. I mean, a kid who a year ago was in high school. And people said it was a lucky heave. No, dude, he shot that ball. I'm not saying he called bank. I'm just saying he shot that ball. Alex, can you show us what happened here at the very end of this UCLA Gonzaga game? Again with the ball in his hands, in the paint, floater, short, got it back, ties it with three. Gonzaga has time to do something. Suggs for the win. Oh, oh yes! Oh, oh yes! Unbelievable! <laughs> Unbelievable! Oh. The perfect season remains oh. on go. Wow, I hope Jim Nance has a voice for tonight's game, and then he's got a voice for the Masters coming up this week. What an incredible buzzer beater. And, you know, when you lose a game like that, there's just nothing you can do, man. I mean, that's just, that is just a war back and forth, man. And a kid from UCLA puts that ball up, misses it, follows a shot, puts it in, ties the game, and then the kid from Gonzaga comes up just so clutch. What can you do? You got to just, sometimes you just got to, dude, congratulations. I mean, you saw the coaches. They were like, oh, I don't know, yeah. they're crazy, right? That, yeah. that is what you call the essence of what playing the game is about. UCLA should have won that game. That was probably the best game as a collective group they were ever going to play all year, and they saved it for the right time. Gonzaga was literally one shot better. I don't think that shot was lucky, as some people put out on the internet. I don't even know why people got worked up over that. That was a great Your shot. Twin? Listen, that guy's a genius, bro. I'm sorry. That guy is a freaking genius, man. Who's that? Skip Bayless. I don't I don't know how. I don't know why. But I am trying to learn from the master, okay? I don't know. This drove people insane. I don't know if it's because he has a platform that that happens or that he's used to just killing people for whatever reason. But that went viral okay viral yep yeah well he's just a an ongoing instigator good for him he knows how to play it dude i mean this guy's pushing 70 years old he's all ripped up and he's making eight million a year just talking smack so good for it's him really really not that hard to see what everybody's loving and then say the opposite of what everybody's saying i'm gonna start doing it i'm gonna start it's a good idea you see what happens. do it on the show 
Yeah. I'm going to do it with the mo. I'm going to do it with the mo then. Sometimes you can't do anything about it, though. Here, let me show you some video. So Jim Gray is hosting the Westwood One radio coverage with Bill Walton. Let me show you the video of Jim Gray watching Bill Walton watch this very last shot. Play it, Alex. Come on, Johnny. Seven seconds to go. Six seconds. Juzang in the paint. Fade away. No. Got his own rebound. Slithers to the rim and lays it in. Three seconds to go. We're tied at 90. Here comes Suggs. Long three for the win. Banks at home. Banks at home. Jalen Suggs on deep bank three. Just in Gonzaga. One step closer to history. Oh, my God. There's nothing Bill Walton could do. Just look at him. Just stand up and cheer. That's it. All right. Yeah. That's cool, man. That's cool. Hey, you got to just show respect, dude. You got to show respect. All right. Um, Alex, how long do I have here? How long do I have seconds. here? Wrap thing. Okay. Seconds. Well, listen, for those of you that are watching on TV, uh, here comes a conversation with Adrian Gonzalez. Adrian Gonzalez is opening day thoughts on the Padres and the Dodgers. And Adrian Gonzalez asks the, answers the question, is he a Padre? Or is he a Dodger? It's something we've been debating on Sided. Go to Sided.co and get involved in that conversation. Adrian Gonzalez coming up next. We'll be right back with more of Scott Kaplan and crew tonight. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and crew show on the mightier 1090 AM. A new generation of radio. SoCal Sports Talk. Kaplan and crew tonight is brought to you by BMW San Diego. Your certified BMW dealer, serving drivers throughout San Diego and the surrounding areas. Arash Markazi here inviting you to catch my show, The Arash Markazi Show, on the Mightier 1090. We are on every Monday through Friday from noon to 1 p.m. Pacific time. Join me and producer extraordinaire G. Hay Wiley, where we chop up Los Angeles sports and try not to piss too many people off. The all-new and Mightier 1090. Join Erica Cardenas on Doing More as she introduces you to ordinary people working side-by-side to confront tremendous challenges and make a positive impact in their community. Hi, I'm Erica Cardenas. Join me on the next Doing More as we celebrate the many accomplishments of women during Women's History Month. Doing more Sunday and Monday night on Your View. Sponsored by The Barnes Firm. Partnering with Shelter to Soldier and saving lives two at a time. Visit thebarnesfirm.com slash shelter to soldier and help save more lives. Attention all dogs, cats, horses, tortoises, birds, pigs, and all other pets. Get your family members to sit, stay, and watch Animal Zone every Saturday at 9 p.m. right here on this channel and at AnimalZone.org. Tune in Saturdays at 9 p.m. to watch Animal Zone right here on Your View. City in Motion is brought to you by McDonald's. Stop by your local participating McDonald's now through April 25th and make a donation or visit walkforkids.org to support. Hi, I'm Vince Bryson, CEO of Ronald McDonald House Charities of Southern California. Welcome to the 2020 Virtual Walk for Kids. coronavirus pandemic will not stop our show because we are still going to walk for these kids. You guys want to do the walk for kids virtually this year? Yeah! Today is walk for kids, you guys, um, virtually. So we love it, love it, love it. Let's get this walk started. We are going to start. So I'm going to be walking around my backyard. Doing the 5K walk. We're here in front of the beautiful Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum. So we are getting ready to do lap three. We're here to send our support. I love the excitement. I love the energy. Let's keep it going. If you want to know the reason why I'm walking, it's because I care about the kids and the families that stay at our house. 
I walk for the Los Angeles Ron McDonough House for kids like me, so they can have a place to call their home away from home. To me, the Ronald McDonald House means love, care, hope, and support. The families and children of RMHC need our help and support now more than ever. So thank you for joining our virtual walk and continuing to support our Ronald McDonald House even during these difficult times. Thank you so much for coming together, for showing that we can unite and be together even though we're not at our respective locations. Thank you for participating in this virtual walk. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for all your help and support and stay well. Ronald McDonald House Charities of SoCal gives families with sick kids the best medicine, each other. Stop by your local McDonald's today and make a donation or visit walkforkids.org to support. City in Motion, highlighting great things in our community like Ronald McDonald House Charities. Give families with sick kids the best medicine, each other. Pete Gray here, inviting you to catch my show, Let's Talk Hookup, every Saturday and Sunday, 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. Pacific Time. For over 30 years, we've been the voice of the fishing community for Southern California, and so glad to be back on the big stick. The all-new and mightier 1090. We have a term for typical cheese-filled, grease-covered, regret-inducing takeout. That's why dinner from El Pollo Loco is always fire-grilled, freshly prepared, feel-good food. The $20 Familia Dinner from El Pollo Loco. Are you living in an underserved community and facing adversity? Do you have a desire to start or grow your own business? San Diego State University's Lavin Entrepreneurship Center, the Center for Leadership and Entrepreneurial Studies, and community partners invite you to participate in our community boot camp. The boot camp provides intense, hands-on exposure to the fundamentals of launching and growing a successful venture. Register today at leadershipcentersw.org. Join Erica Cardenas on Doing More as she introduces you to ordinary people working side by side to confront tremendous challenges and make a positive impact in their community. Hi, I'm Erica Cardenas. Join me on the next Doing More as we celebrate the many accomplishments of women during Women's History Month. Doing More, Sunday and Monday night on Your View. Sponsored by The Barnes Firm, partnering with Shelter to Soldier and saving lives two at a time. Visit thebarnesfirm.com slash shelter to soldier and help save more lives. Adios, love handles. Adios, couch. Adios, quarantine 15. Say adios to the quarantine bod with pollo fit bowls made with fire grilled chicken and organic super greens from El Pollo Loco. Kaplan and Crew tonight presents Sports in a Minute. Opening weekend for Major League Baseball is in the books, and we've got quite a bit to look forward to this season. The Padres took the opening series of the year against the Diamondbacks three games to one. Joe Musgrove had a strong Padres debut on Saturday. Musgrove went six innings, allowing only three hits with eight strikeouts. Fernando Tatis sent opening weekend out with a bang, hitting his first home run of the season in the ninth inning on Sunday, scoring the only run of the game for the Friars as they dropped the finale with a final score of 3-1. The Padres will host the Giants for a three-game series starting tonight. The Clippers got a dominant win against the Lakers on Saturday afternoon with a final score of 104-86, to snapping a two-game skid. Marcus Morris had 22 points, while Kawhi Leonard had 19 points, 10 rebounds, and 8 assists in the win. The Lakers have now lost 6 of their last 9 games. I'm Haley Stasiak, that's your Sports in a Minute, now back to more Captain and Crew tonight. Attention, all dogs, cats, horses, tortoises, birds, pigs, and all other pets. Get your family members to sit, stay, and watch Animal Zone every Saturday at 9 p.m. right here on this channel and at AnimalZone.org. Tune in Saturdays at 9 p.m. to watch Animal Zone right here on Your View.
right back with more of Scott Kaplan and crew tonight. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and crew show on the mightier 1090 AM, a new generation of radio. SoCal sports talk. You're watching Kaplan and crew tonight powered by the mightier 1090 in your view, featuring the best sports talk in SoCal. All right, everybody, so happy to have with us today, Adrian Gonzalez. And let me tell you what prompted me to reach out to Adrian Gonzalez. I had read this story last week that Adrian is going to play for Team Mexico and try and um, be in the Olympics, play baseball in the Olympics, because he's, he's done everything he's ever wanted to do in his baseball career other than apparently represent Mexico in the Olympics. I thought that's so cool. And what really struck me was when Adrian said, this is why I haven't officially retired, which is super cool. I, I don't know, man. I said, you know what? Baseball season's starting. Uh, Dodgers yesterday lost their opener. Padres won their opener. I got to talk to Adrian Gonzalez. So here he is. Adrian, nice to see you, pal. Hey, good to see you too as well. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's good to see baseball get underway yesterday and, uh, you know, get this get this uh, thing underway and, and be able to watch them. Uh, and yeah, for me, uh, you know, last year uh, I was preparing to go play in Mexico and go, you know, try to make the Olympic team for Team Mexico and then represent Mexico in the Olympics. And obviously pandemic hit and Olympics got shut down. So we had to uh, delay it one more year. And here we are today now. So um, why only be thinking about Team Mexico and the Olympics? Do you think, I mean, I would think you could still play in the major leagues. Do you, or do you not think you could still play in the major leagues? Um, you know what, honestly, I passed up multiple opportunities to go play my, you know, minor league deals and, and try to make teams and this and that. But, you know, that's the, I'm, I'm happy being at home with my family. And, you know, this is, this is a, you know, preparation for the Olympics, Olympics. End, and then, you know, that could be that. So um, it's not this thing that like, Oh, I want to make a comeback. This is a, I want to, I want to stay in shape. I want to be ready to represent Mexico because like you said, um, for, I, I call it the grand slam of, of representing Mexico, right? I've represented Mexico as a kid. I represented Mexico in the, in the Caribbean world series, represented Mexico in the world baseball classic. And then if you, if you tied the Olympics to that, then you represented your country in any, every possible way you could, you can. That is so cool. Alex says, as someone who is a team Mexico fan in soccer and baseball. What, okay. What do you think mm -hmm. about what Adrian's doing? I think this is so cool. I love it. So they're make so you can't as the stature that you have, just tell Mexico, Hey, I would like to be on the Olympic team. And they wouldn't just welcome you. Like you actually have to still go and play. Are you doing it just for yourself to go get those, the sharpness no, you, back? No, you have to, you have to prove that you, I mean, you don't want to go out there and hurt the team's chances of winning a medal. You know, you have to prove that you, you're, you're still capable of playing at the highest level possible. Um, I have to go out there and perform. I have to go out there, you know, go to the Mexican summer league and perform and, and prove that I still belong. Cause you have, you know, another first baseman that plays in Japan right now. You have, uh, well, two first basemen that play in Japan. You have a DH that plays in Mexico that that's always been doing really well. So, I mean, you know, they, they deserve a spot too. So I can't just show up and be like, Hey, you know, I'm, you know, I, I deserve a spot. I got to win my, my spot. That's wow. So how does, yeah. What is, when does all this happen? And, and I'm curious, like what you're doing right now to prep yourself. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm doing all what anybody would do for spring training, you know, uh, spring training for me the Mexican league, uh, Mexican season got delayed opening days, May 21st, uh, spring training starts in about two weeks. Uh, April 15th is, is when spring training starts. And so, you know, I have to be there April 15th and go through spring training, just like, a regular season uh, in the U S and uh, the season starts May 21st. And, and uh, from there, uh, you know, hopefully be able to, uh, to do what I want to do and, and make the Olympic team. So let me just make sure I understand this because I don't know a whole lot about professional baseball in Mexico. Um, first question is where are you going to play? Guadalajara, Guadalajara, the, the team's called the mariachis, Mar mariachis de Guadalajara. Okay. And um, what's the family think about, this this you know time well, away you know yeah i mean they're they're not super ecstatic about it since i've been home for almost three years now um but they understand that you know the olympics is a once in a lifetime opportunity i mean for for the opportunity to say that i'm, I'm an olympic athlete as well that's that's you know pretty special 
Uh, I feel like the Olympics is, is the mecca of representing a country and, and, and uh, you know, Olympic sports is at the top of, you know, what most people think of when they think of worldwide sports. Um, and you know, this is, this is an opportunity to do it. It's, it's not a full six, seven months, like a baseball season, a normal baseball season would since spring training starts April 15th and the Olympics end at first week of August. So, you know, uh, should be able to be okay. back, should be able to be back in time for, uh, for the girls, uh, you know, school year. <laughs> wow, man. This is really interesting. This is super interesting, Adrian. We're talking to Adrian Gonzalez this afternoon here on Kaplan and crew. And why I find it so interesting is because listen, I think many people would look at you and they'd say, you're pushing 40 years old. You had a phenomenal, incredible major league baseball career perception outside looking in, man, you made a lot of money, lifetime money. You got freedom, but yet you still want to play and still want to represent Mexico. And that means you got to do all the work. And by the way, there's no guarantee that you make it, which is, I just find it fascinating that you're doing this. Yeah. I mean, this is, this is a great opportunity to kind of, you know, I guess finish it all off with, 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 you know, one of the, the top things you can do. I mean, Obviously, the Olympic Olymp Olympic baseball hasn't been around since '98, uh, so many people in my generation haven't had this opportunity. So I feel like this is a great opportunity to to do it, and and you know the opportunity is there, so why not take it? And you know I've still stayed in shape uh, for this opportunity since last year. So um, and I'm, I mean I'm gonna continue to be in shape, just you know different type of of, of shape once uh, <laughs> w once I'm not focusing on baseball, I'm gonna right. focus more more on heavy lifting stuff, but. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those things that I, I feel great. My body feels great. And, 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 uh, and this is a great opportunity that, you know, I can't pass up. What is the, because baseball hasn't been around since 98, the Olympics always weirds me out. Like, so the NBA sends the stars to go win the gold medal and in some sports it's amateurs. So with baseball, are we going to see major league baseball players represent their countries or is it like, what, how does it work for the Olympics? Do you know? No, the only, well, right now, the only two, the only four teams that have qualified is it's going to be a 16 tournament. Um, so the four teams that are qualified is, uh, Japan, Korea, Israel, and Mexico. So there's still two, 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 two countries that have to qualify. Um, and major league baseball, obviously it's not stopping the season. Minor leagues is not stopping the season. So for the most part, uh, major league, the teams in the, in MLB have said that low, low end pro low end minor leaguers, they might allow them to go, but any prospect, anybody that can help them in the big league level or anybody that can, that can risk injury, they're not going to allow them to go. Uh, J Japan is going to stop the season so they can send an all-star team. Korea mm -hmm. is going to stop their, Korea is going to stop their season so they can send an all-star team because it's very important to them. Mm -hmm. Um, so in Mexico, Mexico's, I mean, we're, you know, we're going to put together the best possible team with the players that are available that are not in the U S well, this is very encouraging for me because now I'm thinking maybe I got a shot at team Israel. Oh okay. man, there you go. I mean, what do you think, man? I mean, maybe I'm in decent enough shape. I mean, I haven't, you know, swung a bat in a really long time and wasn't very good, but, you know. No, I mean, tried, it was, wasn't tried, tried, Mark tried a coach for Israel? No, no, no. Brad Osmus. Brad Osmus. Brad Osmus. Remember that, Adrian? Yeah, he like went yeah. and managed. Like, before he even got into managing in the major leagues, he managed Team Israel. Yeah, I mean, there's there's been quite a quite, quite a bit of players like myself. I mean, Ian Kinsler's talked about uh, you know trying to get ready and, and play somewhere so he can and Adam Jones to represent uh, U.S. to to try, try to qualify and go to the Olympics. You have uh, I I forget who else, but there's 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 been like five or six guys that have said, talked about like trying to trying to jump on board to help uh, U.S. qualify and and go. Uh, and be in the Olympics as well. There's been a couple, I think maybe it was Ian Kinsler that talked about going for team Israel. Um, but there, there's, there's been quite a, quite a bit of guys that are kind of like in my place where recently stopped playing, uh, still a bit able to do it and can definitely go and help. Oh my God. This I think that's so cool so because fun. if you remember Adrian, when, uh, when Mexico won the gold in soccer and they played Brazil, like Na they had Neymar. You know, yeah. like, and they had a bunch of younger guys, but it's so cool to see the young guys mixed with like a veteran or a big name guy. You being there just as a representative would be amazing for Mexico just to, to cause you're going to be the star of the team. I no disrespect to anybody else just because of who you are. I just think it's so cool. Like seeing Neymar with all the young guys and then losing in Mexico. It's just, it was really cool to see all these guys, Ian Kinsler, Adam Jones, the names you talk about. I think that would be awesome. Yeah. I think it's, I think it's good for, 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 for the Olympics and good for the, for baseball. Yeah, this is cool, man. Oh, this sounds, think about that. 
you have enough freedom in your life to do what you want to do. This isn't about coming back to the major leagues or needing money per se. Not that I'm putting words in your mouth, no, Adrian. So, but so, so, there, there is no money. <laughs> yeah, it's just for fun, man. Yeah, it's it for is. fun. It's for pride. Man, that's so cool. That is so cool. Adrian, um, so glad you're here. Let me get a couple of opinions. Start me off with this. Are you following the Padres and the Dodgers? Yes. Okay. So are you yesterday? Let me start with the Padres then. What do you think about what the Padres have done? And here's why I, I'm going to ask it this way. When you played for the Padres, all we ever talked about was let's be competitive. And I remember you saying, I don't want to be competitive, man. I want to win. And they never spent the money back in the day, but now they have all of a sudden spent money that they said they never could in, in years past. So let me ask it this way. What do you think of the Padres as they're currently constructed? Um, I, I mean, I, I love what they're doing. I, I think they, they're putting together a team that can definitely compete with any team in, in the major league baseball. I love the fact that they're going out there and getting, uh, you know, the, the trades needed and, and the free agents and, you know, doing it all that they can do. So, um, you know, I, I personally like, like, and, and, and am a fan of what they're doing. It's good to see Padres owners not come out and say, you know, we're, we're a small market and we can't afford it. Obviously, you know, when I was playing, I got a lot of, a lot of flag because people would say that, you know, take, take less money, even though it was never offered anything. Uh, but it's great to see Tatis sign the deal that he signed and great to see them go out and sign Machado and Hosmer and those guys and, 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 <clears throat> and prove that, you know, the, the, it isn't a market thing. It's, it's an ownership thing. Right. Right. And it's, it's interesting. Um, you say it that way because I remember we had a conversation many years ago on the radio and I said, why not take the hometown discount? This is before they did or did not make an offer, right? And you had a really interesting comment to that. And you said, dude, if I take much, much less than what I can earn, then every other guy who, who's going to sign behind me, that guy's going to look at me and go, you took less, so now I'm being offered less. And at least mm -hmm. that's what I remember you saying on the radio. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's, you know, mar mar mark the market dictates, you know, where you should be, you know, and... Um, I was willing to take a discount, you know, if they were to offer something, but they never offered. So how can I take a discount mm -hmm. if they don't offer it? All right. So then, so then let me ask you this, as we talk about getting started with the Padres opening day, did you also follow the Dodgers in Colorado yesterday on opening day? Yeah. I, follow, I mean, I, I didn't watch the games, but I definitely followed them, you know, on, on, on the MLB app and, and, and Gamecast or whatnot. Um, and yeah, I did, I did follow, follow, follow both games. Do you think like so many other people opine that the Dodgers this year could be the best team in the history of baseball, that they're, they're so loaded. Some people think that they're, they're going to be boring to watch because they're so good. I argue the opposite direction and say, dude, last year was a 60 game season. You got to do it over 162. And that, that includes the Dodgers and the Padres. What do you say? Um, I, I think they have a great team. I, I feel like they're missing, you know, they're missing Jock. They're going to miss Kike. Uh, both of those guys were, were huge pieces that, you know, you can just bring off the bench and they're going to produce. Um, I don't think those guys have been replaced. Um, I feel like, uh, you know, they, they, they obviously have a great pitching staff. I mean, to have David Price in the bullpen, that's insane. Right. And, and their bullpen is really good. Um, so from a pitching perspective, they're, they're incredibly really good. Um, Offensively, you know, obviously they have they they have Betts and they have Bellinger and they have you know Muncy and JT and, and Corey, uh, so they have enough to to do it. Um, are they better than last year? I, I honestly think that they're not better than last year, but I still do think that they are you know incredibly talented and have the ability to win you know 110 games. Okay, so when you handicap Padres versus Dodgers. Who do you like in the NL West? I mean, I, you know, going on talent alone, I still think the Dodgers have more talent only because I feel like, you know, the, the Padres bullpen is, is, is not quite as, as explosive as the Dodgers bullpen is. Um, everywhere else, I feel like they stack up, you know, starting pitching, the Padres have great starting pitching. <clears throat> uh, offense, the Padres have a great offense. Um, maybe in the bench, the Dodgers might be a little bit better coming off the bench with the guys that they have on the bench, but you know, I mean, they're right there. I, I, you know, the Padres are more than capable of, you know, making a run and then making a trade mid season and, 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 you know, winning the division. So um, I don't, I don't, I don't see it as a, as a huge gap. 
I see it as a very small gap, uh, but I still think right now, today, the Dodgers have a little bit more talent than the Padres do. Do you ever, like, take a side because you played for the Dodgers and you played for the Padres? Like, do you ever just – do you consider yourself uh, anything? Like, do you I consider <laughs> yourself a Padre or a Dodger or anything like that? I love them both. Uh, you know, I've had great experiences in both both teams, and, and, and I'm, I, I, I really can't just, you know, decide one or the other. I think mm-hmm. they're both – they're both just as special to me in my heart. They're both, I've had the best experiences in both teams. And, uh, and it's, it's, it's almost impossible for me to take a side. Um, I've said it time and time again. Uh, I, I, I tried to come back in 2018, 2017, 2018, uh, and 2019, you know, I talked to Padres owners and I tried to come back in the minor league deal. And, you know, basically they said no. So that kind of left me with a little bit of, you know, and I love Dodgers ownership. So from an ownership standpoint, standpoint, I kind of lean towards the Dodgers a little bit, but as far as franchises and then home base and, and fans, they're both the same. They're both incredible. It's, it's really interesting that question, Alex, because, you know, Adrian, when we talk to a Steve Garvey, for example, we'll tease Garve that his numbers retired at Petco park and he makes no bones about it. I'm a Dodger. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah you're kind of caught in that you listen you're a middleman in a lot of things right like you've represented and you're going to represent hopefully team mexico but you really grew up at least for a good portion of your life and went to high school in you know the northern part you know on the northern side of the border you know in san diego and so you could maybe do you're kind of caught in the middle dodgers padres mexico u.s i mean you can go either way man yeah, no, I mean, that, that is true. Um, you know, I'm, I'm just lucky and fortunate to, to be from Southern California and, and, and represent basically, you know, all of Southern California in every possible way. So, yeah. um, you know, that's, that's really how I see myself as, as somebody that's from Southern California and loves everything about Southern California. That's awesome. Now, I have seen you, and I think I can hear family in the background, so I have to ask quickly, Adrian Gonzalez, how's Betsy, how's the fam? Tell us what's going on in your personal life. Yeah, I mean, great. Uh, You know, the girls are growing up quick. Uh, Brianna's playing Little League, uh, so she's playing baseball, and Alessandra, you know, she's she's her arts itself. Betsy's doing great. Uh, She's got her shoe line, Mia Bicar, that she's, you know, continuing to work uh, all the time. And so she's busy with that. And, you know, I think, you know, right now we're, we're, we're in a really good spot. We're, we're, we're happy where we are. We're enjoying spring break right now in Palm Springs and just, you know, enjoying life. Um, So Betsy went into the shoe business. I remember when you guys were going back and forth to Italy and she was learning about the shoe industry and yeah. as much as she's an entrepreneur on her own, you, besides being a baseball player and having made a lot of money in baseball, you got all kinds of other stuff going on. I've seen you do like Instagram videos. I want to say for like salsa brands, perhaps. I had your beer the other day. Got oh, how was it? How was it? Very it? good. Our friends over yeah. at El Pollo Grills dropped some off. Yeah. Us. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I, I do, I have taken this time to become somewhat of an entrepreneur and invest in different companies and become partner in different companies. And, you know, I, I, I see myself continuing to do that, uh, you know, after this, this summer's done. Um, I love everything that has to do with finance and entrepreneurship and, and, you know, being a part of different companies that I believe in. So, you know, I, I'm going to continue to do that. And, and I love that. And that's, you know, for me, that's, it gives me the same adrenaline and, and the same, passion and, and work ethic that uh, baseball did when you invest in a company. And by the way, I'm, I'm asking you this because I have a company that I've been raising money for, for over three years. I mean, it's just been an ongoing process and raising money is difficult. It's, it, hard. It, it's really, really hard. So my question to you is when you invest, do you like to take a passive role and just invest cash or do you like to take a more active role and invest your time, your effort, perhaps your celebrity, you know, help where you can, what do you prefer as an investor? Um, it all depends on the company. I mean, I've done both, right? You know, with Calidad, the beer company, I've taken more of an active role um, and, you know, be do everything I can on social and everything. You know, I have my cigar line that I'm doing more of an active role. Um, I'm invested in a, in, in a, in a Christian uh, sports apparel company called uh, Active Faith, and that's more of a passive role. Uh, you know, Jersey Mike's, uh, you know, I, I oversee the numbers and, and with, with my accountants and, and, but we're not in the stores, you know, making sandwiches. How many stores, how many Jersey Mike stores do you have? We have 11 right now. We're opening up in Mexico, the first one in Mexico. And then we have two others in construction. So where are your uh, Jersey Mike stores? Uh, San Diego and Palm Springs. Oh man. How many you got in San Diego? Eight. 
congratulations, dude. Thank you. Congratulations. That's great. We've worked with Jersey Mike's in the past and um, uh, people who own a lot of the, I think they own like 30 stores in San Diego. Uh, mm -hmm. Kathy, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah Kathy, Kathy Brown. Yeah. yeah Kathy Brown and then her mm -hmm. husband and then our, our friend, Brad Samuel. Do you know Brad? Brad Samuel. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. He kind of mm -hmm. handles a lot of the marketing for the company. Yeah. yeah so that's course, awesome, yeah. dude. That is great. Yeah, I love it. It's such a great company. Great, 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 great ownership all the way down through uh, management. It's, it's, it's one of the best franchises there, there is out there in any category. Wow, man. That is cool. That is really cool, man. Wow. I was going to ask if you had any, uh, any, any aspirations of broadcasting. Cause you, you know, you're such a, a good speaker and you're, you're Hispanic in this community, but you're, you're too busy for that, man. Um, you know, I, I did a few games uh, last year uh, for Fox uh, Fox Deportes in Spanish, and and it wasn't bad. You know, I, I enjoyed it as long as long as I'm not tied down to specific like this big calendar. You know, it is something that I, I can I can see myself doing definitely doing some you know specific games and just you know going out there and talking about baseball and strategic and all that. Um, when it comes to it, you know, I I see a game a different way than than, than most people do. You know, and I enjoy talking about that. And hey, what a great conversation today. Adrian, good luck when you go to this spring training that you're headed to down in Guadalajara and good luck with the Mexican Olympic team. And I, I hope that we can talk again because I think documenting this and following your journey uh, will be fascinating. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, this is going to be exciting and uh, I can't wait to get out there. We'll be right back with more of Scott Kaplan and crew tonight. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and crew show on the mightier 1090 AM, a new generation of radio. SoCal sports talk. Kaplan and crew tonight is brought to you by BMW San Diego, your certified BMW dealer serving drivers throughout San Diego and their surrounding areas. Catch Kaplan and crew Monday through Friday at 3 p.m. If you've listened to Scott Kaplan the last 20 years, you know one thing. He likes to stir up some sh A new generation of radio. The all-new and mightier 1090. Join Erica Cardenas on Doing More as she introduces you to ordinary people working side-by-side -side to confront tremendous challenges and make a positive impact in their community. Hi, I'm Erica Cardenas. Join me on the next Doing More as we celebrate the many accomplishments of women during Women's History Month. Doing More, Sunday and Monday night on Your View. Sponsored by The Barnes Firm, partnering with Shelter to Soldier and saving lives two at a time. Visit thebarnesfirm.com slash shelter to soldier and help save more lives. Thank you for interviewing with us. Tell me a little something about yourself. What are your greatest strengths? Well, my differences are my strengths. Those of us with intellectual and developmental disabilities are highly motivated. We are creators. We are leaders and innovators. We are changing the face of work for the better, one customer at a time. Thank you for sharing that with me. I'm confident that you would make an incredible addition to our team. It is time we start building a workforce that is diverse, inclusive, and equitable. A workforce that recognizes that our greatest strengths lie in our differences. Thank you. Join us at deliveringjobs.org. That's the wrap. Here's Kaplan Accrued tonight's 60-second timeout with Haley Stasiak. I'm still watching highlights from Saturday's Final Four matchup between Gonzaga and UCLA, and my jaw drops every time at that final minute of overtime. UCLA's title hopes came to a shocking end when Gonzaga's Jalen Suggs threw up a shot from beyond the arc as the clock ran out to get the Zags the win. The Bruins had trailed by five with under a minute to play, but some strong defense and clutch shots from Jaime Hawkes and Johnny Juzang had tied the game at 90 with time running out. But a second overtime wasn't in the cards as Suggs hit the bank shot to send Gonzaga to the title game. University of San Diego football's run at FCS history came to an end on Saturday. The Toreros had 39 straight Pioneer League wins heading into Saturday's game against Davidson and were looking for their 40th and sole possession of the record. But USD fell short, dropping the game to Davidson 31-25. to That's your 60-second timeout. Now back to more Kaplan and Crew tonight. 
Kaplan and Crew tonight's 60 Second Time Out is presented by Your View. Rich Eisen here inviting you to catch my show, The Rich Eisen Show, on our flagship radio station, The Mightier 1090. We're on every Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to noon Pacific time. You like what you hear. If not, that's just a, I guess too bad. A new generation of radio, the all new and Mightier 1090. Are you living in an underserved community and facing adversity? Do you have a desire to start or grow your own business? San Diego State University's Lavin Entrepreneurship Center, the Center for Leadership and Entrepreneurial Studies, and community partners invite you to participate in our community bootcamp. The bootcamp provides intense, hands-on exposure to the fundamentals of launching and growing a successful venture. Register today at leadershipcentersw.org. Join Erica Cardenas on Doing More as she introduces you to ordinary people working side by side to confront tremendous challenges and make a positive impact in their community. Hi, I'm Erica Cardenas. Join me on the next Doing More as we celebrate the many accomplishments of women during Women's History Month. Doing More, Sunday and Monday night on Your View. Sponsored by The Barnes Firm, partnering with Shelter to Soldier and saving lives two at a time. Visit thebarnesfirm.com slash shelter to soldier and help save more lives. Time now for Kaplan Accrued tonight's Community Connect. Shelter to Soldiers selects dogs from shelters and rescue groups all throughout California. Our ideal candidate at Shelter to Soldier is eight months to a year and a half old. They're confident in different environments. They have strong social drive. Another motivator like food or toy drive. And ultimately, these are dogs that want to have a job uh, and that have a greater purpose to become a service dog. Currently about 85% of our dogs pass their service dog training. But if they don't pass, they become a career change. Uh, we don't like to use the word failure around here. Um, so career change to an emotional support animal, or if that doesn't work out, then they career change to a pet dog still finding a loving placement and purpose in life. Step up. You know, we're breaking that stereotype of what a homeless person is, this subculture of society. We're just brothers, sisters, mom, dad, grandmas, and grandpas being part of the solution instead of part of the problem. So ladies and gentlemen, Left hand side. We make sure that there's uh, no drug dealing, drug use, encampments around their facilities or anywhere in our neighborhood. We self police, and that's all a testament to the folks here that used to be out there. Watch out for sharp objects, ladies and gentlemen. Ed's, uh, you know, once again, he's a perfect example of the caliber of the men and women that have been outside on the streets. Here in San Diego for over 50 years, have worked all my life since 1975, but suddenly uh, I had a stroke. And I lost all muscle control. One of the things you never think will happen to you, but it can. The onus of responsibility need to go to our folks like Ed, people you've seen here that have tremendous skill and give them the opportunity to shine. It's that peer-to-peer -peer support, talking to the folks out there and bringing folks in here to start the process. Let's go. Kaplan and Crude tonight is brought to you by BMW San Diego, your certified BMW dealer, serving drivers throughout San Diego and their surrounding areas. When California weather conditions create a high risk for wildfires, electric companies may shut off power in some neighborhoods as a precaution. These public safety power shutoffs could affect homes and businesses and interrupt power to your home, devices, and even our Cox facilities. During a PSPS, we'll work hard to keep customers connected to their Cox services in conditions that are safe for you, our employees, and our community. For information and updates, follow us on Twitter and visit Cox.com. 
Join Erica Cardenas on Doing More as she introduces you to ordinary people working side by side to confront tremendous challenges and make a positive impact in their community. Hi, I'm Erica Cardenas. Join me on the next Doing More as we celebrate the many accomplishments of women during Women's History Month. Doing More, Sunday and Monday night on Your View. Sponsored by The Barnes Firm, partnering with Shelter to Soldier and saving lives two at a time. Visit thebarnesfirm.com slash shelter to soldier and help save more lives. Thank you for joining us. Catch Scott Kaplan and crew tonight from 7 to 8 p.m. Pacific, every Monday through Friday. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and crew show on the mightier 1090 AM, a new generation of radio, SoCal Sports Talk.